Andrew Sutherland. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Oracle Impact, an opportunity for all of us engaged in technology to discuss and share our experiences of innovating using the information in the world around about us. But I must begin with an apology. Sorry about the language. It's the only one I have. But don't blame me. 300 years ago, the Scottish had their own language called Gaelic, which was Gaulish and is actually extremely similar to French. But then the English defeated us and made us learn English. So it's not my fault. Don't blame me, but I do apologize. Perhaps I can uh, apologize by offering my congratulations to France for, of course, winning the World Cup. So marvelous. <laughs> marvelous. It was an extremely expensive World Cup for me. Not because I went to Moscow. I wasn't invited as a Scotsman. But being Scots, of course, we have a duty to make sure that we support every team against England. So I have to buy a Colombian shirt, a Belgian shirt, Croatia. It's a very expensive World Cup, but perhaps I'll get some money back in eBay. Right. We are lucky people, aren't we? Not just because we're here and we've engaged in technology in this lovely place, but let's face it. As the generations in this room, maybe sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but we're pretty lucky, really, compared with the generations before us. I know we've got problems. Brexit, believe me. Ooh. We've got problems. But really, at the end of the day, most of us can expect to live longer. We can expect to have fewer illnesses, and we can expect to have more independence and leisure time than the generations before us. A lot of that was driven by technology. I can just remember, as a small boy in the 1960s, my grandmother did actually used to wash clothes outside in the stream in the north of Scotland and did grind the corn to create bread. We might think that's beautiful and happy rural existence, but of course, she didn't like that. And the advent of technology, and in particular automation, made our lives so much better than those which have gone before. And we can be proud of that. Automation has driven huge changes massive improvements in the human experience. It's not always been easy introducing these new technologies right from the time of the Industrial Revolution. And I see it today. Traveling the globe, I look across Europe, Middle East, and into Asia Pacific, I see time and time again excited startup organizations with a new app a new technology, a new concept which will save time, add value, make a process more efficient. But to find that they are met with resistance. Because what is an exciting improvement, of course, is viewed with suspicion by people who may feel their jobs are threatened and may feel their very livelihood is perhaps in jeopardy. The introduction of new technologies is never simple. But history shows if our innovations truly add value to many around us, they will prevail. Automation has not stopped its development. It has not stopped its progress. In fact, as we enter an ever more digital world with ever more information at our fingertips, automation is set to progress more and more quickly. And it's just got smart. 
The word on everybody's lips today is autonomous. Combination, data management, artificial intelligence, giving rise to autonomous systems. It's profound. Our investment, just back from the US a few hours ago, we are pouring money into autonomous systems. What's the difference? Very quickly. An automatic system may remove elements of human labor. It may have a series of steps which are bound together into a simple path. But an autonomous system is altogether more advanced. An autonomous system is aware of the context, aware of the world around it, whether it's visual, audio, touch, text, via information from any sort of sensor. An autonomous system takes that information and uses it to decide an optimum action. Automation is a series of actions. Autonomous will make its decision according to the outside. The more clever systems, as you will hear about much more and discuss much more, are adaptive. Not only do they recognize patterns in the world around them, take an action, they then look at the outcome of that action. Did it do what I wanted? Did it get me closer to my goal? Or did it take me further away? And I'll absorb that information so the next time that decision comes up, it will be improved still further. Autonomous systems are no longer just the preserve of enormous organizations in Silicon Valley or defense organizations. Autonomous systems are starting to come in to the reach of all of us. And it's vital that we understand the blend between the use of information and data, autonomous systems, and the business needs. What's the challenge for us? The challenge for us in IT is going to be meeting the ever-increasing business demands. Perhaps one of the easiest examples of autonomous that we're all familiar with is, of course, the autonomous car. That's going to set new business demands in the automotive industry. The autonomous car is constantly taking in information from around it, looking for patterns, making decisions. This looks like somebody crossing the road. I will veer to the right or to the left. Learning from that action what happened, and continuing to improve its decision-making. It's an obvious example of an autonomous system in action, and its implications are profound on the entire business of transportation. The concept of the autonomous kitchen and the autonomous fridge has almost become in everybody's mind. Not yet delivered, although delivered very soon, as we'll hear. The idea of understanding what foods you have in your fridge, when they might expire, what the cost of electricity is, what you normally eat on Wednesday nights, the fact that you don't eat much on a Thursday night, all adopted, learned, and provided as a service to you in the autonomous kitchen. They're fun examples, but there are some other ones which show the degree to which this technology is truly starting to get a grip. I was with a city council in Asia a few weeks ago. And it's a compact city, and they're running out of space. They just don't have enough room anymore, in particular to park vehicles. So they were looking at digging deeper and deeper under the ground. They can't go out. They're bounded by the sea. They're going to dig deeper and deeper to create more car parking spaces underground. And then technologists, innovators, invited to discuss with the city council, suggested perhaps they can make use of modern technology and data to help the city manage itself. 
They've embedded a sensor underneath the tarmac in every car parking location. They've put in a routing algorithm available increasingly to all of the citizens in the city. The city effectively knows which car parking spaces are free and which are occupied. As you approach the city, you ask for a space, you'll be routed optimally to park in the space. The utilization of car parking spaces has gone up from about 75, 80% to about 98%. Of course, it's efficiently utilizing every single space within the city. They've effectively reclaimed land through the use of data and intelligence. I've observed over the last, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, over the last 10 years, some of the most leading edge innovation is coming in the retail sector. It's always been the case that in banking and in telco over the last 10 years or so, there's been a lot of the use of modern and advanced technologies. But increasingly the opportunities and the challenges in the retail business are driving innovation. We're working with an organization who's wanting to ensure not only do they advise their customers what might be the next best purchase, which they'll then ship, not only trying to ensure they have in stock ready for next day shipping, this organization is trialing a system of shipping before order to ensure that their prediction capability, their use of information and artificial intelligence to predict what you might want before you've ordered it. Of course, that won't work with luxury goods or one-off purchases, but the concept that it can guess when you're going to need more coffee, when you're going to need more salt, and deliver it to you without you even asking is an obvious step forward into having autonomous retail systems, effectively deciding at least some of the basic necessities in your life for you. Fantastic opportunities and a fantastic challenge for us in technology. If we're not already being asked these questions, we're going to be asked them very, very soon. How do, I, how do we do that? How do I do that? How do our competitors manage to keep their costs so much lower? How do they manage to target people so much more accurately? How do they manage to have such greater efficiency in these processes? And they'll ask us in technology, to build something and to create something. Not just the same as the competitors, but create something considerably better. <sighs> Unfortunately, for us within enterprise IT, for those of you who've been working and in providing information systems for enterprise, we don't have a perfect record. In building the systems we've built, transaction processing, analytics, rapidly on top of one another, we've created complex and sophisticated environments which are often very costly. To be able to move to the next stage to take some of the ideas we'll share today, big data, IoT, artificial intelligence, to take these ideas and truly implement them, is not always going to be easy. Never mind the business change required later, but even just to succeed in an ever more complex environment. We have issues just managing what we've got never mind the sophisticated, huge systems of tomorrow. Look at some of these frightening statistics 
about how we manage our systems of today. Attacks are made all of just the example of security attacks. There's lots of other examples. Attacks are made constantly against our systems. We all know that. But 85% of them, the patch was already available. What does that tell us? It tells us even before we start building the systems of tomorrow, the modern autonomous city or the autonomous kitchen or the autonomous whatever, we are having problems managing what we've got today. Three quarters of organizations out there are taking more than three months just to patch something which is already there. When you come along with exciting new applications and opportunities, you'll often see a resigned look. How can we do that when we're struggling with what we have today? And it's not just keeping up with patches. Typically, 70% of our IT budgets are just spent managing what we've got, leaving only a few euro to truly spend on new innovative projects. And too often, too often, I've seen this so many times with startup projects inside bigger organizations and startup smaller organizations. They struggle with reinventing some of the basics, reinventing some of the components and some of the capability can absorb so many dollars and slow down the development of true innovation. We need to stand on the shoulders of others. We need to use the most advanced tools that we can so that we can accelerate up to the level we need to be working at. As so often happens, technology produces problems that technology can also solve. So as we look forward to a world of digital innovation and artificial intelligence meeting our needs as citizens and consumers, so it creates problems in how we manage that information. But actually, artificial intelligence and autonomous can also be applied to managing these IT systems. Physician, heal thyself. That's what we are concentrating on, and it's going to be profound. Profound in terms of the skills required within what we today call the IT environment. So many of these skills will become redundant. Profound in its implications for speed of innovation. Our ability to build on top and create on top will be accelerated because these layers below become self-managing. Our goal has been to focus on creating systems which are effectively just like your car, or your car will be, self-driving. IT systems, managing data, managing processes, managing integration, that actually provision, monitor, patch and manage themselves. Very importantly in the modern world, as we know, AI depends upon data. Data is almost always sensitive. It's imperative that these systems can secure themselves. They can detect breaches and secure. And it's also imperative that they can repair themselves. One of the biggest gaps between an idea, a prototype, and something that is truly ready for large-scale consumption in the enterprise is robustness, availability. It's fine in the laboratory, but to make it robust can be a huge challenge. Is it possible? Can we create technology which actually manages itself and allows us to innovate on top? Absolutely. 
Absolutely we can. And it's going to revolutionize how we work. Being Oracle, of course, we started with a database, bound to, can look after itself. In the initial trials I was part of, we set uh, uh, the database, the autonomous database, looking after itself. It learned in the first trial, it was in an organization, it learned this organization always wanted a particular question asked on a Friday. Every Friday, it asked the same question without any input whatsoever, the database learned to create an index, you know, to make it much, much faster. It created the index on Thursday night to allow it to run faster on Friday, and then it dropped the index again for space purposes for the rest of the week. Learned itself how to do that. We'll hear more about that later. Just as I mentioned at the start, whether it's my grandmother and her washing machine, or whether it's DBAs and managing information, this will have impact upon many people's lives. The job will be to aid and support and train those who maybe have spent large portions of their lives administering data to becoming data professionals, able to extract from the information the value so important to those around them. To do that, we also need to have analytics. Because however good we are with artificial intelligence and pattern matching, for decades to come, it's clear there will still be huge value in having people looking for patterns, spotting exceptions, deciding on opportunities. And with the volumes of data there, it's becoming more and more important to have integrated analytics. We should be able to view, visualize, and browse, use natural language to interact with the information as we make decisions and spot opportunities. I wish we didn't need to think or talk about integration. We're here to talk about exciting new technologies and innovation. Integration, surely, is a technology of the past. Sadly, no. Sadly, no. In fact, more than ever, in a world of autonomous systems, being able to make a good decision depends on having a clear view. Can you imagine an autonomous car that can only see in a tunnel? The wider and more complete your view, the better the decision. And it's going to be exactly the same, whether it's supply chain management deciding which product to manufacture, whether it's a customer experience deciding which offer to make, whether it's HR deciding which candidate to promote. The wider the view, the more the information, the better the decision. And today, and for decades to come, that wide view will come from multiple different places. Wish it didn't, but it does. And integration will continue to be absolutely key. And again, if we're looking at moving something from the laboratory into the enterprise environment, the scale of the information required to feed the AI engines will almost inevitably require integration. And perhaps, most importantly of all, autonomous gives us the opportunity to really step up our capabilities in security management. Nothing more challenging than trying to keep a watch on ever-increasing volumes of data, ever-increasing numbers of users, 24 by 7. What an enormous challenge that is. It's monotonous, it's tiring, and it's subject to human error. Once again, in moving from the laboratory to the real world of computing, reliability, performance, integration, but also security, it's an easy question to ask. Ask a startup with a wonderful idea, 
How secure will this be in my environment? Autonomous, again, can provide an answer there. Why not have machines monitor themselves looking for unfamiliar actions, looking for breaches? We've had a real example in finance, um, a nefarious individual trying to change the value of a paycheck after the payroll run, before the payment into the bank. Really very easy to spot for an ongoing autonomous system to spot and to flag an unexpected action occurring. Now, of course, you could write a rule, but then how many rules do you have to write before you cover every eventuality? The difference with autonomous and adaptive AI is it will learn what is normal behavior and alert you when something occurs outside of that. No need to imagine in advance, just allow the system to learn. I'd like to just touch in the last couple of minutes upon some other technologies that we'll discuss during this afternoon. They're related to one another and becoming more and more important to innovators in information and data around about the globe. If I had a penny for every time I've been engaged in a blockchain project, a startup, an experiment, a test, a trial, I'd be rich now. It's one of the most exciting and topical areas. Very, very simple idea, immutable, unchangeable log of transactions spanning space, spanning time, fundamental in how it can help us manage transactions across our society. That's fine, we'll talk more about that later. But what are the challenges? Very simple, it's very simple. In every one of these projects, the budget is set aside, the ideas are cool, and then it bogs down, I hope that translates, it bogs down, gets stuck in the mud of the actual old-fashioned difficulties in getting these technologies implemented, started, managed, running. What a pain. You're trying to change the world with an exciting new innovation, and there's been no progress this last week because the damn system wasn't working. What we need to offer, and we do, is a ready-to-go blockchain service. I need it completely enterprise robust, secure and stable, and available to me tomorrow. I need to stand on the shoulders of others as I develop the true innovation on top. This should be integrated and part of an innovation platform, not something independent that again takes weeks of time and effort and money to get going. It's based, by the way, on Hyperledger. I'm sure you're familiar with If you haven't put a chat bot on the front of an application yet, you will. You will. Almost every branch of our lives, the more we create autonomous systems for ordering, for planning, for travel, for booking, the more the point at which we interact with humans becomes important, and the more chatbots start to appear as the right answer. An HR director I was speaking to the other day, I was explaining what a chatbot is. It's an interface. It can listen to your question, look at its uh, capabilities, and provide an answer. He immediately commented that in his organization, 80% of the questions, 80% of the time and work, sorry, of the HR department was answering questions by the telephone, which honestly could have been answered if only the person had looked at the website themselves. Now, what do I do now? I wish to leave. What do I do now? I'm going to have a baby. What do I do now? I've broken my leg. And there's a huge amount of time and effort spent answering these questions. We created a chatbot within about 10 days. But there's more. 
Even that can take time and effort. What about having chatbots actually able to create themselves? If you've already got FAQs, websites of information, you've already got the core information that a chatbot can use for a conversation. A service ready to go as a chatbot that you can point towards existing information and it gives you the framework of a conversation engine in that very topic. And perhaps last of all, just in the last few seconds, I mentioned this city in Asia with the RFID underneath all of the road services. We'll hear later from some of our speakers the use of IoT, huge volumes of information being provided to help make better optimized and often autonomous decisions. How are you going to cope with that volume of information? Again, the challenge is really being able to get away from the mechanics of actually moving the bits and bytes, stand on the shoulders of others, and start using the data for insights and innovation. Can we simply have an IoT service ready to integrate into existing ERP systems that allows me to get on with the job of innovating? Who are the customers of all of these technologies? Databases that look after themselves, integration systems, IoT ready to go as a service. Who's the customers of all of these? Everybody. Everybody. Perhaps one of the biggest customers is Oracle themselves. In all of our business applications, all of these technologies are being embedded and built upon. Supply chain management systems, better able to predict delivery times and stock control. HR systems, already able to spot patterns in CVs to suggest good employees, to suggest talent development paths. Customer experience systems, better able to predict what offers a particular customer might respond to. So whether it's as a platform to build your own innovation upon, or a business application. The move from automation to intelligent and autonomous is well underway and already having profound effects. As innovators, all of us know that we must use all of the tools at our disposal. We can't afford to reinvent the wheel, reinvent tools, especially in the fast-moving, sophisticated world that we have. Only when we're using these tools can we develop at the speed we need to, can we make or allow ourselves to focus on business value and affecting change for the good. We're standing at the edge of one of the most exciting periods in technology development. You can see it every day in the world around us with autonomous cars, but it's coming to all of us in a very short space of time. Whoever you work with, whoever you partner with, however you progress in this field, I wish you the very best of luck in this exciting time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much.